Then we have always. Okay, what is always? Returns a function that always returns the given value. Note that for non-primitives, the value is returned, or the value returned is a reference to the original value, in other words, and not a, a copy of the value. This function is known as const, constant, or the k-combinator in other languages and libraries. And this essentially says that, okay, when passed something of type a, you get a new function, and this new function, when passed anything, you get back something of type a. So, I mean, this function, we could write this function ourselves. This is super simple, right? So like k, if we call it k as in k-combinator, actually, let's, let's, call, let's call it const because it's, it's very representative, actually. Const is a function that takes some kind of value, returns a function that takes another argument. I'll just name this underscore sort of to indicate that we don't care about this argument. And then it returns x. I mean, that's the implementation of this function. So of course, then if you say const 10, 200 or 2000, Right, and we'll see what this gives. Uh, it gives a syntax error ah, because I wrote const const. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. So maybe I can't call it const because it's mistaken for the word const or, or the keyword const, the, the language construct const. So so instead of const, let's actually call it k. My apologies, the k combinator. This is why it's called k. Combinators are sort of different functions that are studied theoretically. I mean, I would love to tell you more intelligent things about this, but I don't know many more intelligent things about this other than it's pretty interesting. And check out the Wikipedia page. Let's move on. If we do that, we run this uh, constant function with 10 and then pass 2000, we of course get 10 back, right? As you can see. But, uh, and clearly, I mean, this is dynamic language, so we could pass anything as a second argument here and we always get the first argument. And that's the point of const. Sometimes it's very useful to say, I have this place and in this place, I need to use a function and this function will receive a second value. But every time, literally every time you pass me a second value, I only want to return the first value. And I have a, a, a sort of a hard time coming up with a, a, an example on the spot. But hopefully, hopefully, as we venture through all of these different methods, hopefully we'll see uh, a place where we will actually uh, sensibly be able to, to make use of this. Lenses, for example, I, I, I can put a, put a link to an interesting blog post about lenses. Lenses make use of the k-combinator so that they can provide a getter and a setter in the same function. And I mean, let's not talk about that because there's a lot of depth to that, but that's pretty interesting. So this const function is actually very useful. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, there's also a, a function called identity, right? Often called identity or ID. Uh, and I mean, Ramda also has an identity function called identity, right? So it's also implemented very simply, something like when you pass an X to the identity function, it just returns the X. And this just seems totally stupid, right? It's like, well, okay, so, so ID of 10, is well 10 of course right i mean it's like it makes no sense right? i mean it makes perfect sense but it's completely useless but it's not completely useless if you think about like when we have uh, if and else's for example like if we have an if if else function that first takes a condition uh, conditional conditional or, is it, or let's say true or false and then or maybe we pass the data to all of these so, so, so maybe we have an expression here and, and then we have whatever happens, uh, a function that's evaluated if, if we get true and a function that's evaluated if we get false. And here maybe we pass the data to that, so like we pass some x here and we pass this x if it's true to this t function. And if, if, it's, if the expression is false, then we pass the x to the, the false function. And here it might actually make sense to say identity. It's like, well, okay, if it's, if it's uh, true, or let's say, yeah, I mean, let's say if it's true, I want to return, run some kind of transformation. Whereas if it's false, I just want to return whatever value I had. But I mean, now, now we're going ahead of ourselves and ID actually had nothing to do with this. So sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. So, so let's get back to, to, to the K combinator or essentially const, right? So uh, K of, of, of 10 and then anything else is essentially the first value. That, that's const. So let's go back to const here. No, sorry, it was not called const. It was called, my God, it was called always. So always, uh, this function is known as const, constant or K combinator. And uh, the way it's implemented in Ramda is essentially, so instead of using K here, we could say R, let me break the line here again. So we could say R dot always, and then we pass the value that it always is, and then we invoke it with some other value, and then we can see that we get the first value. So it behaves the same way as, as our implementation. I think maybe we can do this as well. 
Ah, oh, we can't. Okay, so that's the same thing. So I, I think, yeah, again, I mean, sorry, I'm learning about type signatures as we go along here as well. These parentheses are very important to think about because uh, here we can see that we, we get back a function and not something that we can uh, partially apply. As you can see, I mean, we could not, it, it, the whole thing is not current. We could not pass this as, as two uh, arguments. Uh, necessarily, we have to close the invocation here because always actually only takes a single argument and then returns a function. But Let's not think too much about this. Also, of course, we could invoke it with no arguments and we still get the constant. Anyways, let's move on. So that's always. Next one is and. And and is super simple. It's just logical and, but less uh, with less confusion than what we had before when we had, what was that, all pass or all. Yeah, all. So all was logical and over many things, but and is just uh, logical and over, over two things, right? So if you read the, the definition here, it says, we get something of type A, we get something of type B, and uh, returns true if both arguments are true, false otherwise, right? So back, we get either something of type A or we get something of type B. And <laughs> this, this seems a bit odd, but I mean, I mean, when you see two, two types like this, it doesn't necessarily say that the two types have to be different, but it just says, says that they can. So one of the A's and B's here would be true, and one of the A's and B's here would be false. So when given some combination of true and false, we get either true or false back, is essentially what we're trying to say here. But yeah, more generally. But again, then we look at the examples here, and of course, it's, it's fairly obvious. We're saying R and on true true gives true, R and on true false gives false, and so forth. Um, in order to actually try something sensible let's see if we can partially apply, apply this so can we say can we say this yeah I mean that works right and if we pass false here that's false okay super good and, and then again okay so the reason this worked is because we didn't have a parenthesis here if we did have a parenthesis there we wouldn't be able to to partially apply it like this we would have to in oh sorry uh, sorry of course my mistake we, we would be able to uh, apply it like this but maybe not like this but that still works, right? And then if we pass false here, this still works as expected. So, so it's it's this kind of syntax that we wouldn't be able to use because it's not the same function. So that wouldn't be be possible if we had a parenthesis here. Anyways, let's move on. Um, then let's look at any. And any, I said, is sort of the inverse of all. Actually, I have no idea whether it's strictly the inverse, but but I mean it, it's logical or over, over many things. So so we can just do uh, r dot any. And then again, let's, let's think about that. We have a function here that when given something of type A returns a Boolean. Uh, so let's, let's again just say R equal, R equals if something equals 10, and then we'll pass a list of A's. So this uh, list of things of type A, so, so list of things that can potentially be equal to 10. Uh, so, so let's say uh, 10 and 20 and 30. And then if we run that, we'll get a Boolean back, which is then true or false. So we get true here, which makes no sense because, no, sorry, of course it makes sense because now we're saying logical or not logical and. So we're saying, does any of the items in this list actually equal 10? Which of course they, they do. But if we change this first element to 11, we get false because none of the items actually equal 10. And of course, again, you could you could exchange uh, this piece for uh, for any predicate of your liking, either from Ramda or some combination of the different Ramda functions or or uh, something that you define yourself. So that's that's uh, any. And again, we ha here we have this comment about transducers. So if you're so if you're interested, definitely dig into that. But otherwise, we'll talk about uh, something along those lines in the future. And then any pass, of course, same thing as so. So notice that we have all and we have all pass, and then we have any and we have any pass. So any pass is the same thing as all pass, but for logical or. So yeah, let's let's quickly write something up again. We could say any pass, and then we pass a list of predicates, and then we invoke that with some number. Let's say we invoke it with 10 and the list of predicates is uh, let's say greater or equal than a 10 uh, or and the other one is less than or equal uh, than uh, let's say 100 uh, and again we have to do this r dot underscore underscore to get the order of the arguments in the way we uh, we express this now or, or in order to actually express what what i was saying now so so let's look at that so here we get true because either this 10 that we passed in is greater than 10 uh, greater or equal than 10 or uh, less or equal than 100. And actually, I mean, this any, we could ex change this any for all here, right? That would be true as well, because actually both of them are true. But let's, so let's stick with all, and then let's say, but what about 90, right? 90, ah, sorry, of course, it's also true because it's less than 100 and greater than 10. But uh, let's, let's look at uh, 9, right? So 9 is false. 
of course, right? False. Because 9 is not greater than 10, but it is less than 100, right? So, but then if we switch to any pass, then it's back to true because of course, while it's not greater than 10, it is definitely less than 100. But if we then go to 101, uh, mm, yeah, <laughs> we still actually get true, right? We still actually get true here because it's still greater than 10. So wait a minute, let's think about this. We're saying any number that's greater than 10 is okay, but any number that's less than 100 is also okay. So actually this is, we can't make this fail. But I mean, if I would say, let's say greater than 110, this makes more sense, right? So if we say either it's greater than 110 or it's it's less than 100, right? So it's between within that span. Right? I mean, I shouldn't say it makes sense, but that's something that we can at least make fail, right? So this this is false now because well, sorry, not within that span, but it's exclusive for that span. So anything that's not between 100 and 110, and this is why I'm saying maybe it doesn't make sense because we should probably not this, or I mean, we should probably express this using an and, but whatever. If it's either uh, greater than 110 or or, or less than 100. Or actually, I mean, it depends completely on your scenario. You would express it in the way which is most logically understandable within given your act the actual semantics of your scenario. Anyways, but now if it's 80, for example, this of course passes because then it's it's less than 100. Uh, let, let's let's move on from this function. Let's re let's remove this stuff. Um, so what's the next one? Well, that's any pass. Now let's look at something more interesting, something a bit more interesting. So app. I assume app is for apply or something like that. So app applies a list of functions to a list of values. So, so now we're getting into some really crazy stuff.